Hey guys, today we're going to talk about what makes a good gun belt. Is it how the leather, is it the thickness of it, is it how stiff it is, single layer versus double layer, bull versus cow, uh, where on the cow or bull did the leather come from, be it shoulder, side, belly, uh, who's the tannery that makes it, and how it's constructed. Now, all of these things, in a sense, make a difference. Now, we're going to go through it all. The first thing I wanted to do was to show you guys, if you buy one of my belts, how do you size it? That's the number one question I get, even though it's, it is on my website, there's a, a drawing. But just for to make it short and sweet, you measure from the tip of the buckle all the way to the hole you wear it in the most. That's, that's the easy thing. It, give me that measurement, I'll make that the middle hole on your belt, and it should fit every time. That way we don't have to worry about what buckles on your belt versus my belt. Uh, makes it easy. Alright, on to what makes a good gun belt. Another question I get is, hey, or a statement, hey, I want a stiff belt. Well, are you sure? Is that what you've been told is good? Is, you know, I can take and wrap leather around a piece of spring steel. You can thread it through your belt loops, buckle it, and the second you unbuckle it, it'll blow every belt loop off you've got. Is that a good belt? It's stiff. So, when you're choosing a belt, don't just necessarily go with stiff or thick. You know, uh, there's a lot of things that make a, a good gun belt. So we'll, we'll get into the other ones in a minute. Tanning of the hide. Who made the hide? Who, a tannery can make leather stiffer, stronger, softer. They can do a lot of stuff at the tannery. Before I ever buy the belt, or before I ever buy the material, the hide that I split it from, you know, a tannery makes a big difference. Uh, if, you, if you've watched my video I just made making this belt, if you've not, check it out. It's, it's an interesting video. You see all the steps that I go through. But you'll notice that I split this leather down. I split the main, the raw leather. Uh, because I don't, I don't necessarily think and most of my customers agree, you know, I don't think the thickest belt I can make is the best belt. I can make this belt a half inch thick. You can't get it through half the holsters. It'll be uncomfortable when you sit down. Uh, it's just bulky. It, like I say, you gotta wear this. You don't, you don't, if you didn't, we would all wear wear steel around our waist. I've had few people wonder, you know, hey, I don't know if you can tell, but if you look, yeah, that's focused, this area here, the fold over, is thinned down. I thin it so when you're wearing this belt, you don't have a big bulge under your shirt sticking out. You know, I've seen guys on videos, they go, Oh, this is a great belt. Look how thick the fold is. We're not using this belt to pull a bulldozer out of a mud hole. We carry a gun on it. A few pounds, couple of pounds, two and a half at the most. It's fully loaded. I carry a SIG 229 most of the time with 15 rounds in it. That's a heavy gun. I don't need what I've got here, but I want them to last, so that's how I make them. You can see here, if I didn't do that, see how thick that would be? And this is just one layer. I double this. And then, you know, I take that and I thin one of them down so that you don't have the big bulky belt. You've got a good gun belt. But I take 
these things into account. I, I scive the, the other end down. I'll show you here on this belt. You can't really see it because it's put together, but where this back piece of leather, because I make a, I make single and double layer belts, but this is a double layer. But under here, I thin the end down where I bring it together so that, again, you don't have that big bulk. This isn't going to break. There's drives me nuts when I see people on videos who are telling you who want to buy a holster or a belt, and, and you know they're giving you this information. And of course, everything you see on the internet's true, bonjour. But that's something I do. Uh, I groove where this stitch line goes. Before I sew it, I run a groove down it. Is it necessary? No. But that keeps the stitching lower to the belt. So when you're pulling it through your belt loops and stuff, you're not putting excess wear on the stitching. Uh, another big thing I hear is single layer versus double layer. You know, one guy, uh, I won't mention it, but he's, he says, I use bull hide and a quarter inch thick, but he doesn't edge stitch it, and he claims that that's stronger than a edge stitched belt. Now, I guess he doesn't have a sewing machine. I don't know. I don't want to call the guy out. I don't want him to be pissed at me, but it's not true. And I've, I'll, show, I'll give you a little example here. I took two pieces of leather from the same height. One of them I stitched with my small machine. It's not even this big thread that I normally use. But just to show you, this one, if you look, I'm holding it in the same place. And you can see how it stretches. I mean, it takes something. But that's another thing. The way the grain of leather runs, if I clamp one end of a 60 inch belt in my vise, say I've, I've, I need another inch, I can stretch that leather an inch to get that extra inch if it's not quite long enough. You bigger guys, you know, you there's some, there's some stretch. The edge stitched piece, I can't, I can't make that move at all. Stitching is where your strength in your belt comes from. Uh, leather, like I say, leather has a grain. It will deform. <clears throat> I don't, I, I, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to know that. That's why people edge stitch a belt. So, uh, another thing I want to go to is group, or edge finishing on a belt. I take a an edge beveler. I go down all the edges and round them over both sides. Then uh, you you burnish your edges. However, you know people burnish them. If you can see there, that's a that's a very smooth edge. It goes through your pants well. It slides through your belt loops. If you look at a cheaper belt, like a Walmart belt or something, it'll just be cut off straight. A good gun belt, whether you buy mine or not, these are little things that should happen on a belt. You know, that should be done. They're just simple. If they're not done, they give you a reason. I don't care. It's just cutting corners. Uh, that's the bottom line. So, but when you're looking for a belt, finishing... How does somebody, do they take care and, and do they have pride in what they do? Will it hold your gun? You know, a thin, a thin piece of leather may hold your gun. If you're carrying a, a uh, let's say something light like a shield or an XDS, maybe you don't need this thick of, of a belt. I also make a single layer stitched belt. That's good for guns, a little more comfortable, but you know, would I want to hang a full-size 1911 or uh, a P229 full of 15 rounds off of it? Maybe not, it, you know, uh, but it's all, it's give and take, money versus whatever, but 
just want to be sure I wanted to let you guys know that just because it doesn't have a fat rollover hey if you feel that makes a good belt and you order a belt from me you tell me you don't want this end thin down I'll leave it thick you know another oh another thing is a buckle I use a, a high quality roller buckle that pulls your belt through less wear it's just you know, this isn't the cheapest buckle I can buy, but that's this is my standard buckle. If you get a belt, whether it's me or somebody else, and you put another buckle on it that's rounded over or something, and you wonder why the edges up here at your tongue are rubbing raw or wearing raw, well, look to yourself. It's probably the buckle you're using. You know, uh... Where did the belt come from? I've heard guys say, oh, well, I only use double shoulders or I only use side or whatever. If you're a big guy, a double shoulder, you can't get that much belt. Uh, you know, that's going to come off the side. I try to bring my, if, you, if you're a, a 40, uh, 42 or less, I try to pull you off of the shoulder because it is a little better. Uh, does seem to hold up better and stronger. If you got a 60 inch waist, you, you're coming off the side because that's the only place on a cow that's long enough. Uh, oh yeah, bull versus cow. I hear that a lot too. Do you use bull hide or cow hide? Man, I don't know if you guys have ever seen a tannery. I've watched videos. I've done research on leather. I've, I've done everything. I see, I see <laughs> hides stacked up by the thousands in piles laying in the floor of a tannery. I, I think I think they don't know what they're getting. I don't I know I don't. So I can't tell you if there's a difference in that, but I, I yeah. <laughs> I'll I'll just say I don't know how you know. I'm sure the manufacturer can tell you, but I'd be surprised if they know. I think they just say it's thick or thin. But Anyway, guys, I'm going to keep this one short. I appreciate you listening. As always, I thank you for your business. And let me know if you have questions. I'm open. If you've got ideas better than mine, feel free to let's discuss them. Have a good day.